dear audience, students and scholars, here I am Dr. Ramjad Ali. In this video, we will learn what is money, the functions of money, the types of money, and uh, the development of fiat money, how the quantity of money is controlled, and uh, how the quantity of money is measured. Dear scholar, when we say uh, a person has a lot of money, we usually mean that he or she is wealthy by contrast economists use the term money as uh, as a more specialized way okay what is money to an economist money does not refer to all wealth but only to one type of it money is the stock of assets that can be readily used to make transaction uh, roughly speaking, the dollar in the hands of the public make up the nation's stock of money. Functions of the money. By talking about the functions of the money, money has three purposes. It is a store of value, a unit of account, and a medium of exchange. While talking about as a store of value, money is a way to transfer purchasing power from present to the future. Like if I work today and earn $100, I can hold the money and spend it tomorrow, next week or next month. Of course, money is an imperfect store of value if prices are rising. The amount you can buy with any given quantity of money is falling. So people hold money because they can trade it for goods and services at some time in future. Okay, while talking about as a unit of account, money provides uh, the terms in which prices are quoted and debts are recorded. Microeconomics teaches us that resources are allocated according to relative price. Uh, the prices of goods relative to other goods just yes, store post their prices in dollar and cent and cents like a car dealer tells you that a car costs twenty twenty thousand dollar not four hundred shares even though it may amount to the same thing similarly uh, most debts require the debtor to deliver a specified number of dollars in the future not a specified amount of some commodity money is the yardstick with with which we measure economic transactions as a medium of exchange money is what we use to buy goods and services this note is legal tender for all debts public and private is printed on the every currency when we walk into store we are confident that the storekeepers will accept our money in exchange for the item they are selling and we are actually buying the ease with which an asset can be converted into the medium of exchange and used to buy other things goods and services is, is sometimes called the asset liquidity because money is the medium of exchange, it is the economy's most liquid asset. To better understand the function of money, try to imagine an economy without money, a barter economy. In such a world, trade requires the double coincidence of wants, the unlikely happenstance of two people uh, each having a good that other wants at the right time and place to make the exchange a barter economy permits only simple transaction money makes more indirect transaction possible like a professor uses his salary to buy books uh, the book publisher uses his revenue from the sales of books to buy the paper and the paper company uses revenue from sales of paper to pay the lumberjack and the lumberjack uh, uses his income to send his child to college and the college uses his tuition receipts to pay the salary of the professor in a complex modern economy trade is usually indirect and require the use of money types of money money takes many forms and many types but here we are discussing the most uh, commonly discuss types of money okay money that has no intrinsic value is called the fiat money because it is established as a money by the government degree or fiat fiat money is the norm in 
most economies today but most societies in the past have used a commodity with some intrinsic value for money this type of money is called commodity money and the most widespread uh, example is gold when people use gold as a money you know, or use paper money that is redeemable for uh, gold the economy is said to be on a gold standard gold is a form of commodity money because uh, it can be used for various purposes jewelry in uh, dental filling and uh, uh, so on number of other transactions as well the gold standards was common throughout the world during the late 19th century the development of fiat money it is not surprising that any society no matter how primitive uh, some form of commodity money arises to facilitate exchange people are willing to accept a commodity currency such as gold because it has intrinsic value the development of fiat uh, money however is more uh, prefixing and here uh, one of the main question arises that uh, what would make people begin to value something that is intrinsically useful to understand how the evolution from commodity money to fiat money take place imagine an economy in which people carrying uh, uh, bags of gold when a purchase is made they buy uh, <clears throat> the buyers measures out the appropriate amount of gold if the seller is convinced uh, that the weight and purity of the gold are right the buyers and the sellers make the exchange the government might first get involved in monetary system to help people reduce transaction costs using raw gold as a money is cost is costly because it takes time to purify uh, uh, or verify uh, of the gold and to measure the correct quantity in, of the gold and to reduce these cost uh, the government can mean gold uh, kind of uh, known purity and weight the kinds are easier uh, to use than uh, gold blown because their values are uh, widely recognized and uh, uh, the next step is for the government to accept gold from the public in exchange for gold certificates pieces of paper that can be redeemed for a certain quantity of gold okay if people believe the government uh, promised to redeem the paper bills for the gold the bills are just as value as the gold itself in addition because bills are lighter than the gold and the gold coins as well they are easier to use in transaction eventually no one carries gold around at all and uh, these gold bank government bills become the monetary standard and finally the gold backing becomes irrelevant if no one ever bothers to redeem the bills for the gold no one cares uh, if the option is abandoned as long as everyone continue to accept the paper bills in exchange they will have value and serve as money thus the system of commodity money evolves into a system of fiat money so notice that uh, in the end the use of money in exchange is a social convention everyone values fiat money because they accept everyone else to value it as equal as they are thinking okay how the quantity of money is controlled the quantity of money available in an economy is called money supply in a system of commodity money the money supply is a simply quantity of that commodity but in an economy that uses fiat money such as most economies today are doing the government control the supply of money and legal restrictions give the government uh, a monopoly on the printing of uh, of money just as the level of taxation and the level of government purchases uh, uh, are the policy instruments 
uh, of the government so the quantity of money the government control over money supply is called the monetary policy like in the United case and many other country monetary policy uh, is is regulated by an independent institution or sometimes the partially independent institution like the central bank. Uh, the central bank of the United States is called uh, uh, Federal Reserve or uh, normally famous as the Fed. If you look at uh, the US dollar bill you will see uh, that it is called a Federal Reserve note to see and over monetary policies are made by the uh, Fed, uh, Federal open market committee this committee is made up of member of federal reserve board uh, who are appointed by the president and confirmed by the congress together with the, with the president of the regional federal reserve bank the federal open market committee meets about every six weeks to discuss and set monetary policy okay the primary way in which the fed or central bank control the supply of money is through the open market operation the purchase and sale of government bonds when the federal central bank wants to increase the money supply it uses some of the dollars uh, it has to buy a government bond from the public uh, because these dollars leave the central bank to enter into the hands of the public the purchases increase the quantity of money in circulation uh, conversely, when the central bank or federal uh, Fed Reserve wants to decrease the supply of money, it sells some government bonds from its own portfolio. This open market sale of bonds uh, takes some dollars out of the hands of the public and thus decreases the quantity of money in circulation. So the detail of the central bank, how the central bank control the demand and supply of money will be discussed in our coming discussion. Okay, how the quantity of money is measured is one of the more important uh, uh, question here. Uh, one goal is here to determine how the money supply affect the economy. We turn to uh, the topic uh, of the de detail of this topic will be discussed in our coming video but, but here uh, because money is the stock of asset used for the transaction the quantity of money in the uh, in the economy is more valuable to understand here okay the most obvious asset uh, to include the quantity of money is currency the sum of outstanding uh, paper uh, money and coins uh, did most day-to-day -day transaction use currency as a, uh, as the medium of exchange okay a second type of asset used for the transaction is called the demand deposit uh, the funds people hold in their checking accounts if most sellers accept personal checks assets in, in a checking account are almost as convenient as currency in both cases the assets are in a form of ready to facilitate a transaction demand deposits are therefore added to currency when mating the quantity of money once we admit the logic of including the demand deposit into Mayer money stock many other assets uh, also want the inclusion of uh, uh, of them into the money supply function or like we have the funds and saving account uh, can be easily uh, transferred uh, into checking accounts these assets are almost as convenient for the transaction as others so money market mutual funds uh, also or oh, investors to write checks against their accounts although restrictions sometimes apply with regard to the size of the check or the number of the checks written because uh, these assets can be easily used for the tran transaction they should arguably to be included in quantity of money because it is hard to judge uh, which asset should be included in in uh, in money stock more than one mayor is available okay from the smallest to the largest they are designated cm1 and m2 
Okay, uh, uh, the central bank or the Fed used to calculate another or even more extensive uh, measure called the M3 and in some other countries M4 is also used as a definition of money supply or money. So this is all about what is money, the function of money, the types of money, the development of fiat of uh, development of fiat money, how the quantity of money is controlled and how the quantity of money is measured. So see you with another video. Ciao.